Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Because I'm Crafty. My name's Caitlin, and today I'm going to show you how to make a baby sleep sack. So it's another one of my baby DIYs, and I've seen this kind of popping up everywhere when I looked up things that I wanted to make for my friend's baby shower, and I thought it was a really cool idea. So it's a sleeveless enclosed sack um, and I made mine with a zipper down the center. Some of them just had separating shoulders which I did also with velcro um, but I also wanted to do the zipper so I zipped it up from the bottom. If there needs to be a diaper change or anything like that you could just unzip like half of it, pull out the bottom and uh, do what you need to do and that way the zipper isn't anywhere close to the baby's face. But I think this is really cool. It's definitely for a little bit bigger age. It's sleeveless so your baby won't get overheated or anything like that. And it's made out of a really nice thinner polar fleece. So it's not going to be too too hot and I've got all my searched edges inside and everything like that. It's super simple to make and I just used um, a combination of two patterns for the idea. Um, but really I just took one and modified it when I actually cut out my fabric. So if you guys want to find out how I made this sleep sack, then keep on watching. So I've got all my pattern pieces here and my zipper. So I'm just going to unfold them all and unpin the ones that I want first. I guess there's only really two. And then I've got some little pieces that I can sew on to finish off the edges. So I've got my front. I can take this off. If you remember from the cutting video that I did, the kind of fabric haul, um, I used a kind of jumpsuit pattern so that I could get the shape of the top. So it's just a sleeveless um, top on it. And then I just rounded off the bottom for the sleep sack part. So I'm just going to take this pattern piece off. So I can insert my zipper down the front. So that's my one side, this is my other side. So first thing I want to do is figure out where I want to place my zipper since I am putting the head from the bottom so she can zip it up from the bottom and do any diaper changes or whatever she needs to do. Um, but it's not as long as the sleep sack itself, this is the longest zipper that I could buy. And I cut it quite a bit longer, I probably could shorten it a bit. So I think I'm going to decide how um, far from the top I want the zipper to start. And then I can sew up that little section. And I'm going to serge these edges first also. And then I can decide if I want to cut this shorter so that the zipper is closer to the bottom. Just so that it's easier to get the baby in and out if needed. So I'm going to go ahead and serge my sides and then sew up that little part at the top and then I'll start inputting my zipper. So to do the start of my zipper, I measured down from the neckline 4 inches and to me that looks like a good enough space because some of it's going to be taken away at the top once I sew on my edging. So this is where the end of the zipper is going to start. So I've seen how far my zipper went down the front and this is where we ended up. So that's where the head of the zipper is going to go. So I want to sew up that little section. And I want to sew up this section from the neckline. So this is how my front looks once I've sewn the top and the bottom together. So I've got my little pocket for my zipper. So I want to come to the top. This is where the neckline is here. And I want the bottom of the zipper to be up here. So I want to make sure that my little stopper is at the end there. So I'm trying to see how much I've got for seam allowance when I line up this zipper. So if I put the center of the zipper matched up with my seam, I can see that I've basically got my surged edge just sticking out from my zipper tape. So now I know how much I've got for seam allowance. So I can pin that amount all the way down. So basically just my serging is sticking out from my zipper. So 
So there's the one side of my zipper. And then, so after I sew it down, I can do a top stitch to hold it down again. So I'm basically gonna sew on the outer edge of the zipper tape, kind of like a basting stitch. And once I get the other side sewn in, then I can do like a rectangle box around the whole zipper. So I'm gonna take this over to my machine and sew it all up. And while I do this, I'm gonna use my zipper foot. So now I can take my zipper and zip it up. And you can see we've got some extra space in with our zipper tape. So we want to fold our fabric in closer like it is at our end points. And we're going to do a top stitch with, we're going to finish off the corners. So, so I'm essentially just going to fold it in its kind of natural position where I've sewn it and pin it like that, making sure that the fabric's a little bit away from the teeth so that it doesn't get stuck in the actual zipper teeth. And we're going to do this in one smooth motion, so we're going to go around the entire zipper in one go, so you don't have to start and stop at each side. Alright, so now we can do our top. I'm actually going to switch my foot back to my regular foot. The top here, I want to sew straight across. I think I'm just going to sew a quarter inch away from my zipper. So we successfully got our zipper in. So this is how it looks. So that's the top there, all the way down to the bottom. Looks pretty good, she'll have easy access to baby. And then on the other side, it's nice and clean and neat. It's not gonna be scratchy or anything like that. So now that we've got the front together, we can now unpin our back from our pattern pieces. And we're gonna put our right sides together, front and back. I did trim a little bit off the front, so it is gonna be a bit smaller than the back. But we're gonna trim our back so that it fits too. So I only pinned till about here because I want to see how the bottom is sitting since I did trim off some. So our back is bigger, of course, because we took away some seam allowance from the front and I did trim it off. So I did trim a little bit off the front as well because I could tell that it wasn't completely um, even. Okay, so we've got our sleep sack, front and back, pinned together. And I'm just gonna use that serger with the two needles in it to sew the side seams together. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more here so you can see the surging stitches a little bit more closely. 
And I'm going to show you a little trick to unpick um, serger threads really quick. Basically all you want to do is unpick the needle thread. So I've got two needles in my machine right now, so I've got a needle stitch going across the bottom. And you want to unpick it from the middle of the loops that are there. So I'm taking out this bottom. Light pink one to start, which is a little bit harder to see. I'll go halfway and then you can see what I mean. Actually unpick it a little bit down further and just pull my long thread that I've got here. Now I'm going to unpick that darker pink thread that I was using on one of my needles. I'm come down here. So I'm going to pull it out. And then all of your loopers, top and bottom. Oh, there's a needle thread stuck there. But all of your loopers should just come away. And then your fabric is separated. So it's really fast if you can just get out your needle threads. And then your loopers just come right off. So I decided I'm gonna put like a little tab across the top of the shoulder so that it's got a little bit of extra length to kind of fold over each other. And then it'll have some like a Velcro. So I've got some strips here that I cut out and they're just one inch strips. I'm gonna fold them in half, put them right sides together with my body. I'm gonna put a few pins in just to hold it for now. I'm not wanting to change the shape or anything, so I don't need to pull it or anything like that. So this is the back neckline, and it's just gonna pop out just a little bit so once I get the surging on, it'll be kind of like half the width and it'll just have a little finished edge on it. I'm not going to cut anything off either when I surge it. There's our banding. Our surging looks good from the top side and the bottom. So then this is going to get top stitched up. So that's our, what our back neckline will look like. So I'm just going to cut off the excess. So I need it. There you go. So now I'm going to do the front neckline. And I have that seam going down the center front where my zipper is. So I want to make sure that my seam is pressed open and it stays open while I serge this banding on. I want to make sure there's a few extra pins there. So now we still have our armholes, so we'll do those next. We want to make sure that our serging is towards the back, so I'm just going to pin that in place first. So I've got my banding across my armhole, my front, my back, and my other armhole. So now I want to figure out how I'm going to attach my bands and then I can do all my top stitching. So these are my little band tabs. They're two and a half inches by three inches and I want to be able to fold them in half and attach them across the top here. Just like so, but I need to close my ends off. 
first. I'm just going to take my tabs and I want to serge these together. There we go, we've got our tabs on. So I'm going to switch over to my sewing machine and do all the top stitching and attach the velcro. So with my serger threads that are left over, I'm going to tuck them underneath so that they get caught in my top stitching. So I'll tuck it underneath and I'm going to be flipping my tab over like this. So I want to put a pin to hold that down. That. So I'm going to be top stitching my serging down for my banding. So I'm going to be top stitching across here and then stitching across to hold that serging down from my tab. There we go, so I have all my top stitching down. So now I'm gonna figure out where my fronts and backs are so I can attach my Velcro. So I want my back to overlap onto my front so that the excess is on the front of the baby. Um, more likely than not, the baby's gonna be sleeping on its back. We want the overlap to be on the front and not the back so it's not uncomfortable when they're sleeping. So we've got this turned right side out now and this is our back so we want it overlapping the front. So since this one is the front, it's closest to the baby's face and it's facing upwards. If for some reason the Velcro comes untied, we don't want the scratchy part facing the baby. So we want the soft side of the Velcro to go here and the scratchy side to go on the back. So I'm gonna take my fronts. I'm gonna measure my Velcro piece. It's gonna go right there. We want it a little bit smaller than the whole tab. We've got our Velcro cut and it's going to go about right there. We want to zigzag the edges, so I want one of the smaller zigzags. And this is the front, so we want the soft side on it. So we're just going to do a small zigzag all the way around the edges. So I hope you guys enjoyed this sleep sack tutorial. It's really easy. And even if you don't have a pattern to use, you could take some baby clothes that already pre-exist and just kind of cut it out from that if you're unsure. Especially for the top part. The bottom part you can totally hand free cut. Um, but the top part, if you want the armhole and the neck hole shape, then that might be helpful to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was really easy to make and super simple, not a lot of materials and even a beginner can make this. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and make sure to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you don't know, I also have an Instagram account and Facebook page, so make sure to check those out. The links will be down below. And I'll see you next time, crafters. Bye!